All right. So are we about ready to go? Yeah? Yes. Good? All right. Cool. Well, my name is Maura Teal, and I am a web developer at fansighted.com. We're a Time Inc. property. Uh, I build everything from themes to plugins to front end development there. Um, and today I would like to share with you a piece of WordPress uh, called Custom Post Types. So you might be thinking, what are custom post types, right? We, we've kind of alluded to the name, called it a post, right? But what really is a custom post type? You might be familiar with posts, right? Because if you go on your WordPress dashboard and you wanna write a blog post, click on post, click on add new, and then you're presented with a screen that allows you to enter the title, enter the content, probably enter a featured image, right? We've all done this. We've written our blogs. Raise your hand if you have a WordPress site. Anyone? Yeah, everyone? Awesome. So you all know what a post is. But we're actually talking about custom post types. So a page, a post, and a navigation menu walk into a bar. Okay, no they don't. But what do those things have in common, right? Actually all, they live in the same place in the database that stores all of your post information for WordPress. So if you look at this giant table that lives on your server, it not only contains your blog post, but it contains all of the information for your pages, all of the information for your navigation menus. It also contains information for every attachment you've uploaded. So if you upload an image and then add a caption and stuff like that, that actually gets stored in the post table. So it's considered a post, right? That gets really confusing. Because really a post is a post is a post, right? I want to write a blog post, that should be a post. Let's call post blogs, right? A post in this case, when we're talking about custom post types, when we're talking about attachments, when we're talking about anything that gets stored in that WP post table, really that's just a blob of information. It's a row of information that gets stored on that table. I don't even want you to think, post anymore, custom post type, custom blog, okay? It's just a chunk of information. So we're talk talking about creating custom stored. And when you start thinking about that, it starts to make a little bit more sense. Because we start talking about who cares, right? Who cares about custom post types? Whatever they are, they're custom chunks of information, who cares? I do, because I like organization. I'm a developer, but I know this extends well beyond any developer. Everyone likes organization in their life. There's zen in that, right? Everything has its own little bucket that it should live in. And that's exactly my feeling on it, is that I want all of these little pieces of information to make sense. I don't want every piece of information to go just in that giant blog post bucket, right? WordPress is so much more than that now. So this is really who cares. Okay, this is really the beauty in custom post types or these blobs or these chunks of information that we can tell WordPress that we'd like to store, that we can tell WordPress we'd like to customize and extend what you can do to fit our needs. So here's a couple of very quick examples just thought of off the top of my head of custom post types, portfolios, products different testimonials. We're starting to see how we maybe want to store all of our products just in one spot. We don't want to write a blog post about every individual product because then we have to worry about tagging it all correctly. And then what happens if we don't want it to show up just like a blog post shows up? We don't want the date on a product. We want the product to stand alone and contain its own set of information, right? So what other types of information maybe would make sense as a custom post type or a custom content type. And I might want to store as a custom post type beyond these three. No? People, employees, a directory. Okay, that's wonderful. Service providers, right? Anyone can spin off that? No? 
How about locations? What if you run a business that has multiple locations, multiple places that you want to reference? How about I'm doing an accident tracking site? So I want to store all of the different accidents that have happened in a specific area, maybe in downtown Phoenix bike accidents. So I want information about each of those. I don't want to write blog posts about all of those because that's standalone information, right? So there are no websites have recipes. Food, recipes, absolutely. What if you want to be able just to have your own directory of recipes? Um, and that, that's a wonderful lead off into the fact that custom post types, because there are these blobs of information, and you know that a post technically can be an attachment, a page, a post. Um, as you start thinking about how pages can have parents, right? But posts don't. A post doesn't have a parent. And post whether or not it has the capability to have a parent. So you can start organizing your information even more specifically. You can add things beyond custom categories, right? You can create custom taxonomies to order things. Now that's getting a little ahead of ourselves, so let's take a step back. So here's kind of a, a quick screenshot of the two examples of a custom post type or the different post types in action. Here we've got an actual screenshot of a database, right? This is our WP post table. This is what is on the server in giant you've got rows and rows and rows of all your blog posts. Every time you upload an image, it counts to a post. It counts as an attachment. So that gets stored in a row. And you'll actually see here we've got attachment right there. And it's images. So this is, in this case, it was a JPEG. We've also got pages. We've got revisions. Yeah, that's another type of post. All of your revisions get stored unless you turn them off for our at a specific hosting company that likes to turn them off. Uh, and a nav menu item. You'll notice at the top it might be a little bit small, but nav menu items, they're all stored in the same table of information. Think of a giant Excel spreadsheet. These all live in the same place, and WordPress just clarifies what type of information it wants by the post type column. So when we want to store new information, it might sound complex, right? It might be like, how do we hook into that? Um, and if you've never written code, it might seem a little intimidating, but this is a great chance to start writing code. There are so many examples out there, and it's a very few, a very small amount of code that you have to write to insert information into this table, to get your own custom organization, to get your own posts, media, pages, comments, and then, oh, I've got a portfolio all of a sudden. Because maybe I wanted to create my own portfolio of content, or of, in, of information, of, of pieces that I want to store. I don't want to put portfolio pieces in my posts. I want to put portfolio items in my portfolio. So now we're starting to lean toward kind of some of the nitty gritty, right? We're going to say, OK, so how'd you do that, right? So. How do we add a CPT, a custom post type of blog? How do we add a blog of information uh, to that as a row to that post table? And to add that information, we're going to add it with a plugin. Yeah, <laughs> guys, there's code ahead. Just, just so everyone's aware. But I promise it'll make sense if you're at all familiar with maybe some of the inner workings of WordPress. If you've ever looked at some of the file structure, if you know what a plugin is, and that it lives in the plugins folder. Uh, so we've got adding via a plugin. And, and then we've got some other options. And I'm not going to get into that. Carol is. Uh, but after you build a plugin, you also have the option of finding one that already suits your needs. Or you can use a custom post type builder plugin. Those are two separate things. We can find a plugin. Say I want to build a testimonials custom post type. I'm sorry to say, but it's not some like brilliant revelation that I've just had, right? <laughs> How many people want testimonials on their website? How many people have clients that want testimonials on their website? 
How many people want reviews, right? That's another really great use case for custom post types. Uh, there are many, many plugins out there that add a custom post type to your WordPress installation via plugin and add additional bells and whistles that are, are worthwhile just to download the plugin and get a great custom mm -hmm. So, So this, this is more for understanding where custom post types come from and maybe if you're curious and want to get your foot in the door with some development, this is a wonderful opportunity to do so. So now let's talk about building the actual plugin. Okay. Who's familiar with the way the folders are all organized within a WordPress installation? Everyone kind of knows about that? Okay. Do you know how to access your site via FTP? If you don't, let's talk later. Because you should know. So you can back your files up, so you can go retrieve things, so you can go repair things. Even if you never touch it, you at least know what's there. It's much like the file structure that lives on your computer. Do you have a question? I do. Huh. It is. <laughs> so why do we need to know the structure of the file? One of the options is that you have to plug in the So maybe in Backup Buddy, your backups are starting to get really big because you're backing up your entire plugins folder. You know what plugins you're already using, right? You've got kind of a list of them and maybe have them on your computer. So you could exclude all of your plugins. So every time it's backed up, it goes in the backup. Yeah. 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 It depends on your installation and how you have it set up with Backup Buddy. You can have Backup Buddy saved to your, your server. In that case, it goes into the uploads folder. Um, so, so where's your uploads folder? How would you get that if if you needed to download it and you weren't sending it to S3 or to Dropbox or something like that? Um, just just kind of having a general understanding. It never hurts to have technical understanding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, and, and put another way, do you know where your documents folder actually is on your computer without a shortcut on the desktop? It's in your C drive, right? You know that because you've kind of clicked around and know kind of how to get through without the shortcut. Um, this is kind of one of those cases where what if you needed to get to an image in your uploads folder? How would you know how to get to that without accessing it just through your media library on WordPress? What if you didn't have that? What if WordPress was down for some reason? Um, those are some, some good use cases. But yeah, it never, never hurts to, I'm, I'm glad you're here. That's, that's what we're going over, so that's good. Um, and this is actually a very kind of quick picture into that file structure is uh, is once we're starting to build our own plugin, and it, uh, you know, I, forgive me because this kind of turned into a how to build a plugin basics, right? Uh, and and this is a very abbreviated talk on that just to get some custom post types. Um, but when you actually look at your file structure here, and I, I don't know if everyone has a good view of this, but WP content contains all of the content, right? Like plugins, themes, uploads in your WordPress installation. So there's the root directory that holds your site. WP content is an immediate folder below that. And then you'll see plugins, right? And plugins contains everything from Backup Buddy to Akismet to Hello Dolly. Uh, anything you download, even if it's through the dashboard, goes in a folder in this plugins folder. So say we want to create our own plugin. And I highly encourage people, if you have just a, you know, a test installation or, or you're getting really adventurous and you set up a local site on your computer, uh, I encourage you to test this out and toss a folder into that plugins folder, name it with what you want your plugin to be, preferably lowercase, no spaces, just hyphens, um, 
and then create a file within that with the same slug .php. Okay, so we've got a very, very basic plugin, but I, I swear to you, just that one file will create a plugin on your WordPress installations. I, I don't want to say it's that simple because I know even just getting to this point feels complicated. But once you get comfortable there, you'll be like, oh yeah, I can create a bunch of plugins. This is great. And I'll tell you another advantage to this. Uh, and this is stepping a little ahead of where I wanted to, to mention this, but I think it's important. You'll notice if you buy a theme from Theme Forest, maybe it's a, you know, it's got a great portfolio section or an events section or, or a team member section. That's really wonderful, and that, that probably gets you off the ground and really gets you going. And then you get tired of that theme. And you go, I'm going to switch to 2015, or I'm going to switch to something else that I found that's cool on, on Theme Forest, or, or go somewhere, you know, like elegant themes. And when you switch that theme, and I, I tell me if you've done this, because I certainly have. Uh, your custom section of content, that events, that, that team members, that portfolio, disappears. It just goes poof. Yeah? Anyone <coughs> experience that where you, you were like, this should still be there, right? It's part of WordPress. <laughs> no, no, the theme was actually the one doing the registering of that information, right? The theme was the one that was saying, hey, WordPress, by the way, this, this blob of information, these team members that I, I want to be a custom post type, uh, this is relevant, right? So we always want to use a plugin if we can help it to register and create our custom post types. That's why I'm demonstrating it this way, and that's why I encourage you to experiment with it. Uh, it, it never hurts to know a little code. So here we've created MLT portfolio and MLT portfolio.php, and now we get into using the plugin. Okay, so every plugin, when you open up that PHP file, and you can open this up in text edit, notepad, you don't have to have a fancy code editor, it doesn't have to be something you can get a subscription for, text edit, notepad, notepad plus plus, anything like that. Uh, you will see this information if you open up the main plugin file, in any of those files in your plugins folder. You'll see plugin name, Probably a plugin URI, which is the URL that the plugin technically lives at. You'll see a description probably, and you'll see a version number. There's additional information that I've left out here, but those are pretty much the bare bones of what you need to tell WordPress, hey, in this PHP file, this is a plugin. This is the information you need. It's got a name, it's got a description, it's got a version number, right? And again, this is just it's a little bit tough to, uh, to get as code up on a screen here, but seeing it in action is kind of neat. We've got a live demo coming up. So after we've built the header information in our PHP file, we're going to add a function. And a function is basically a piece of code that completes logic. Okay, So we're going to add a function in PHP that registers the custom post type. And we've got an array. An array is basically a key value pair system of information. So in the array, and these things with dollar signs are just variables that hold those arrays, right? So they're placeholders for this information. We've got a function. We've got labels. And we've only got one label. We only need this one thing to tell WordPress to make sure it knows what to call said custom post type, and we're calling it portfolio. And then we've got what I call args, our <laughs> uh, arguments that are telling WordPress for the labels. Look up here. Look at this variable. These are our labels. And then do we want it to be public, right? That's kind of important. I want it to be front facing. I want people who visit my website to be able to access, excuse me, this custom post type. And then WordPress has its own function that we're going to nest within the function we've created called register custom post type. And this is where we're creating the custom post type. And you'll notice it's got a slug there, MLT portfolio. This is what we're telling WordPress okay, 
when you go to insert one of these custom blobs into that WP post table, I want you to give it the name MLT portfolio in the post type column. And then give it these arguments or arms, right? Give it these arguments, the label that we want, the name, portfolio, and then it's public. And finally, we're using add action. And in the add action, we're saying, hey, WordPress, by the way, I want to make sure you know that you need to execute this. So we're saying add action when WordPress is doing its initialization in it. Okay, so on add action in it. And then we're saying, hey, we want you to reference this function that we just wrote. So add action in it, and then reference this MLT custom post type function that we've created. Making sense so far, everyone? Yeah? I'll just ask a question. Sure. So with all of the, uh, like with the different categories that you use the product, so the labels would actually be the product or the name? Yeah. Yeah. So instead of calling this portfolio, I'd probably put products right there. And same with here. I, I wouldn't want it to be MLT portfolio. I want it to be MLT products. And you'll notice I use a lot of MLT. I swear that's not because I'm just like really into myself and want to have my my initials in front of everything. That's actually good developer practice. It's good to make sure that you aren't writing something that might have already been written before. And I know it's impossible to assume that no one else has the initials MLT, and I might have not downloaded a plugin already that someone wrote that uses a function called MLT custom post type, but that at least minimizes the chances of that happening. So that's why I'm including MLT like I am, and I recommend that everyone does the same and, and kind of follows those same best practices. I know it's a lot of extra kind of information to sync in at once, but it's worth it. So let's do it. Let's build a custom post type. What do we think? Yeah? Good? All right. So I've used some of the code that we already wrote out up in the keynotes. You'll have to bear with me just a moment because this is a giant mess. Should be able to fix my font size though. Size? Ooh, I can't even see the size in there. Oh my. Yeah. That's too big. How's that? Can everyone read that? Mm -hmm. Yeah? A little bit smaller so I can type. Oh, this will be fun. All right. So. Everyone that looks familiar, yeah? That is our plugin header. That is, when we look at this section, right, we've got, and here we've actually got htdocs, which counts as our server root. And then we've got WP admin, which is a WordPress folder, we shouldn't touch that. WP content, and then our plugins, which contains MLT portfolio, and the file we're in is MLT portfolio. So now that we're looking at that, we've got our plugin name, and these start, this opening PHP tag is important. Any PHP file you have, you should start with an opening PHP tag to make sure that the server and whatever is parsing this information goes. This is PHP, this is the code that we're writing in. And then we are using these asterisks, the slash and the asterisks, to actually tell PHP that this is a comment. So WordPress understands this format of a comment block, a block of information within the comment, um, and it parses all of this information out so it understands that it's a plugin. So this is important stuff that we always want to put at the top of our plugin. And then you'll see all of this stuff is essentially the same. We've got some extra space to see. So we'll have to read the size. But we've got function, MLT custom post type. We've got the labels that I mentioned, MLT portfolio, portfolio here, labels public, true, register. So this is all of the code that I just showed you, right? Yep. All right. Let's see if we can't get Chrome up here. There we go. All right, this is gonna be fun on this, this monitor, or this resolution, so bear with me. This looks familiar, yeah? Dashboard? All right, 
And you'll notice we don't have anything in here. We've got dashboard, home updates, posts, media pages, comments. Those are pretty much what you're always going to see on a default WordPress install, right? But don't forget, I already have that plugin folder and file in my file system. So if we go down to plugins, this is going to take us to installed plugins. And then you'll see Kismet, Hello Dolly, and then, oh, MLT Portfolio. Isn't that fancy? So we've got MLT Portfolio there. We've got the description. And WordPress understood all of the information we fed it via that comment block. And it shared it here. And it's giving us the opportunity to activate it. So let's go ahead and do that. There's no extra voodoo. There's nothing else that I had to write for the activation and deactivation pro process. WordPress understands all of that. So in this process, now if we look over in our sidebar, we've got dashboard, posts, media, pages, comments, and ah, oh, portfolio, yay. So we've got portfolio, and I've already added a portfolio item here. Uh, but you'll notice when we go to add new, it's calling it a post, right? Remember, posts, blobs. It might as well say add new blob, OK? Uh, but essentially, adding a new item in our portfolio. So this is an additional portfolio item. Presentation. We'll toss some more ellipsum in there. And then you'll notice we've got all of the things that we're used to with posts, right? We've got publish, we've got save draft, we've got move to trash. WordPress already understands that because this is how it handles blobs of information that go into the WP post table by default. We don't have to write anything extra. So if we want to write code for ourselves that we control, we can do that and achieve that much with how many lines was it? Outside of the comment block, it was probably six, I'd say, roughly. Yes, one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, essentially seven lines of code, yeah? So that's pretty handy. That's really empowering, actually, because I can create that, and then I can take that information with me. I don't have to rely on someone else's plugin that what happens if they push an update someday that brings down my site. I don't have to worry about changing themes. And then someone someday saying, hey, your site, man, that could use a real update. And then I get curious, and I'm like, all right, well, let's test some other ones out. And then I lose years of portfolio items that I've spent a lot of time fine-tuning the verbiage on. Uh, none of that happens. So let's save this guy as a draft. So there's post-draft updated. That's great and all. OK, you'll see. We've also got a permalink, right? CPTs.dev which is my, my local development site, MLT Portfolio, which is that name that we've given it. And then it automatically has a slug. It all looks pretty. Default WordPress install. But say we want to get a little bit more custom. And I'll pause here to see if anyone is lost or has any questions or doesn't understand. Sure. Okay. Yeah, I had it on my clipboard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I just pasted it in. <laughs> Can I ask another question? So, like, all that code for each one of those sections, you're going to run that code for each one. So, you might have 10 different sets of that with different names in there? Yep. In the okay. mm -hmm. No, not in the same portfolio. Oh, different if you want to create different custom post types, right. then yes. So you can have a portfolio, then you can have a project, then you can have a team, right. then you can have, yeah. So and all of that using that same code. For yep. Just, just and, and let's uh, say maybe we don't want it to be portfolio anymore, because that's kind of a, I don't know, I'm a web developer. Maybe I do want to call it projects, right, instead of portfolio. The one key here is that I have already created items with the MLT portfolio slug. So when we register the post type, we don't want to change this name under register post type. We want to make sure and leave that guy the same, MLT portfolio. Um, because otherwise, WordPress is going to think it's a whole new post type and treat it as such, and then my, other, my old ones are going to go. 
So what we can change is the labels, right? The labels are just front facing. Um, so let's change this to adjuncts. Okay. So I'm gonna go back and let's just, I'm just gonna click right here again, it'll change regardless. So now it suddenly says projects. So yeah, you can change any of the labels. Um, and I, I prepped a little bit for that as well because we're gonna add even more labels in. So let's change this back to portfolio just so we've got some consistency there. And I've got a lot of commented out code down here. Uh, so basically code that I'm telling PHP just to completely ignore, but I'm, I'm still right here for safekeeping. So if I uncomment some of this, uh, let's go to singular name, right? So here we've got singular name. Maybe, and, and now's a good point too, where I, I failed to mention this when we were looking at the actual add new, right? We go to add new, it says add new post. WordPress is gonna default to post. Post is like WordPress way of saying blob, right? Blob is my own fun little term. Uh, but essentially you're adding a new post or a new chunk of content and WordPress is like, all right, well you didn't define what you wanted to call it, so we're at least gonna fill it in with post in, in the time being. So we're gonna define some of that information and by calling singular name, we're gonna call it portfolio item. We've also got a menu name, which we're gonna call portfolio, which actually WordPress understood from the name, but here we're defining it to be a little bit more clear. We could make even a, a bigger adjustment there if we wanted, say we wanted something slightly different. The name in the admin bar, add new. We want it to say portfolio item, so we're gonna define that. Add new item which is slightly different. WordPress gives you lots of options for very fine tuning here. Edit item, new item, all items, view item, search items. What happens when it's not found or you've put something in the trash? There's text that comes up on the page. So if you've deleted a post and it says, there are no posts found in the trash, instead of saying that, you wanna make sure it says there are no portfolio items. So there's a lot of fine tuning that just shows up in these nice little arrays. Okay, this nice little pointer that says, for the menu name, we wanna call it this. And now if we go back into our editor here, and remember I've called it portfolio again, so it's not gonna say projects. We've got portfolio, and now up at the top, it doesn't just say add new, it says add new portfolio item. We're giving our users some extra information to remember, oh yeah, I'm not just adding a new post or a page, I'm adding a new portfolio item. So if we add a new one, now it says at the top, add new portfolio item. Making sense so far? Can I, can I ask, where did you get all those? Where, did you copy and paste them from somewhere or did it just pop up? You know, the so there are, there are a couple of resources here. Um, and I, I actually wouldn't even necessarily bother to send you to the codex. The codex is the place that has a bunch of references for developers, uh, a bunch of chunks of code snippets, examples on what you would use, why you use it where, for functions uh, that WordPress provides. Um, but there is actually a great resource here, and I, I will bring up my presentation. Well, I'll, it, it's on my presentation um, as a resource. So let me grab that page, because I've got a link. There is a wonderful spot here uh, a wonderful site, I should say. It's called Generate WP. And we can actually go over that real quick because it's a worthwhile resource. GeneratewP.com will provide you with that same snippet. So it's going to provide you with all of those little spots that you can fill out that I just showed you the menu name, the add new name, the trash name. Um, you can fill all of that information out. So we've got generators here. And what we can do is say we want content. We can create a post type, right? Say we want to create a post type, that's what I want to. And then it's saying use this tool to create code for post types with register post type function. And here is the default code that it gives you. This is before you fill the really handy part 
is that you can click on each tab here, labels, and call it whatever you want. Say we wanted to do portfolio. Oopsies. Update code. And it says it's updating. And now down here in the name, Oh, yeah, there, menu name, it says portfolio, right? So we've got to fill out all of these spots now to make sure it's up to date. But, but essentially, it gives you all of these spots to fill out. And I can see it's got function custom post type. We would want to add a little prefix in there, MLT underscore, to make sure because we don't want someone else or a plugin to have haphazardly created a function called custom post type. That would um, potentially break your WordPress site. So always use prefixes. Um, but we could copy and paste this. There we go. And it's even doing the add action, if you can see at the bottom here, of an it custom post type. So this custom post type references the function up above. And basically, I could even take this code, and don't forget it's called register post type post underscore type. I could copy that, and instead of doing MLT custom post type here, I could delete all of this, paste in, I just hit Command B, and now when I go over to WordPress, and I refresh, whoopsies, that's an invalid post type, it doesn't exist anymore, so I have to go back to the dashboard, but now we should see portfolio, remember I created it I deleted all of my existing code and created it here. Our customizations are gone, and don't forget the slug has changed, that register post type was now post underscore type versus MLT portfolio. Um, so it's not finding anything, right? There's, there's a little level of importance there, is that changing the slug means WordPress doesn't know what it mapped to in its database. So this register post type section here where it says register post type post underscore type, it doesn't know what it's looking for. If I change this back to MLT dash portfolio, it should know what it's looking for. Oh, well, except post type equals. Oops, that's invalid. So it's the same there, but now my stuff's back. Because WordPress knows to map it to MLT portfolio. Making sense? Does this seem useful to anyone? As a developer, I'd like to be able to control my own information. Um, and essentially, this is, this is something that is fun to play with. And if you have access to a server, um, this is essentially a really good starting point, right, for write some code. And a lot of us have copied and pasted code into our functions.php file of a theme, maybe, and hacked our way around there. Uh, that's a really handy way to get started with development. This is your second step. This is, I created my own plugin, right? This plugin isn't going to touch my theme until my theme instructs it to do something on the front side vision. Um, this is going to create the custom post type for us. But we've created our own. What is that? Right? Next step is creating your own theme. You should do that too. So I guess I've already kind of gone over, kind of gone over the uh, the fact that you shouldn't create a custom post type directly within a theme. Like I said, you can change information out in a themes functions.php file. A lot of us have copied and pasted code in there. And if you copied and pasted that same generate WP code that we, we saw up here into your themes functions.php, it would function the same way. Because according to WordPress, it's just saying this is PHP code executed. It's not super concerned. Of, of course, where it lives matters. But if it's instructing the right stuff, it's going to still execute. Um, it's up to the developers and up to the people managing the sites to effectively organize all of this code into the correct file structure. So that's why we should really put our plugin custom post or custom post types into plugins. 
I have cried. I haven't cried, but I've been very, very sad when I changed a theme and I went, oh, my stuff disappeared, much like when I changed the slug of my post type and those two posts disappeared, even though it was named portfolio and it looked like it should be there. Why isn't it there? So we've got some resources. Uh, at the very beginning of this, this presentation, I did link to the codex. I linked to the page that describes custom post types. So if you're interested in some more reading, some probably more accurate or detailed reading, I recommend you go ahead and go there and check it out. But we've got Generate WP, which does a really nice job of saying, here's all of the stuff that you can customize around the custom post type, and then you can drop that code. It's safe. You can drop that code into a plugin and use it on your own. And then there's a custom post type tutorial that actually walks you through these same steps with a lot more depth and information than I just did. Um, but Elegant Themes is a reputable spot, and I recommend you go ahead and look through that. I believe that tutorial also has a video on it. So if you would learn by hearing someone's voice again or going through a screen share process rather than chunks of code, that's really helpful. So thank you, everybody. Um, and I would like to mention that this is a stepping stone into what Carol's about to talk about, which is, what if you don't want to write the code? <laughs> How do you create these chunks of content without buying a theme that's already got a portfolio? Say you want to use your current theme, but you would like a portfolio. You would like a directory of business people that you would like to reference. Uh, you would like to contain all of the information about each product you have. Um, Carol's going to get into a little bit more on that side in a couple minutes. Thank you. Thank you.